Welcome back to Organic Chemistry 2 Synthesis. This time around we'll be looking at how to make amines. Let's jump straight in. Both um, aliphatic uh, and aromatic amines are susceptible to oxidation. Yeah, that is why uh, in most catalogs of chemical suppliers you will only very rarely find the free amines um, uh, because uh, simply under oxidative conditions, it means water and oxygen, uh, free amines react to something else. Yeah? So here in this case, we react our ethyl amine via this uh, transition state here to an ethyl azenol. Yeah? And that can go on and react uh, um, with other things in the solution or in the solid. Um, in the case of aniline, yeah, water and oxygen might take you potentially yeah, uh, to uh, n phenyl hydroxylamine. Yeah. And with stronger oxidative agents and the elimination of water, you might get to nitrosobenzene. And finally to nitrobenzene, yeah. Yeah, this, um, this kind of uh, susceptibility to oxidation uh, is the reason why chemical suppliers usually provide amines as uh, quaternary um, water soluble, uh, well, most, uh, mostly water soluble salts. Yeah, so we can um, get these quaternary salt, uh, salts via the reaction of our amines with strong acids. Yeah, so here um, we are reacting our ethyl amine with HCl. Yeah, the amine deprotonates our HCl, and we get here this ammonium chloride salt. So that is very handy, yeah. In fact, uh, as I mentioned, um, these uh, these uh, water soluble salts uh, can then be used for purification purposes, yeah. So you can extract them from from organic solvents, and uh, they provide oxidative stability. So how would we go about making amines? Well, we might try um, alkylation of ammonia. Yeah. So ammonia here on the uh, top left hand side um, as of course our nitrogen lone pair yeah, it's a strong base um, and it's a good nucleophile so you might um, perform such a nucleophilic attack on a meth for example some uh, uh, some halide yeah so here in this case we've got methyl iodide we form here uh, this quaternary salt again, yeah, and upon deprotonation, we would get our primary amine. Yeah, so that looks good. That's a way to make amines. Um, however, yeah, we are still left with this available lone pair. Yeah, so um, well, we can do this alkylation pretty much again, and that is what's happening in um, in, in uh, such a reaction. So uh, we would get um, our secondary amine in this case, and this can happen again. Yeah, here. So the secondary amine can get alkylated again to give uh, us our 
tertiary amine and finally the tertiary amine can react with um, our methyl iodide to get a quaternary amine salt. Yeah? And in fact, if we try to run such a reaction, we would end up with a mix of all these products. There are of course better ways how to make amines. Um, and here we see two of those. Yeah? So one of them is uh, the alkylation of ephthalamide uh, anion. Yeah? So we generate our anion here um, via the uh, um, deprotonation of our ephthalamide. So this can be achieved by uh, potassium hydride, for example, uh, or some other potassium alcoholate. Yeah? So here we are essentially uh, de deprotonating uh, this NH functionality, yeah? generating our anion. And now this is a sufficiently good nucleophile to perform a nucleophilic attack on an alkyl um, bromide or an alkyl halide in general. So we're kicking out our bromide and uh, we're forming this new nitrogen carbon bond which you see here. Yeah? Now uh, there are two ways how to actually liberate the amine. So one of them, yeah, starting out with our with our product from the last step, we can either react it with hydrazine Yeah, so hydrazine N2H4. Yeah, we get uh, um, here our the hydrazine essentially inserts into this five-membered ring, and we get uh, uh, we get our free amine out. Yeah, alternatively, we can react um, uh, we, we can react this with hydroxide anions. Yeah, with some base. Yeah, we open up this five-membered ring, yeah, like so. Yeah, so there are several ways how to do this. Yeah, we're not going to draw the entire reaction mechanism, and uh, we're essentially kicking out our amine. Yeah. Alternatively, yeah, we could also um, alkylate a nitrile. Yeah. So here we have our nitrile anion, yeah, potassium cyanide here in this case. So the cyanide anion is a good nucleophile. Again, you can kick out your bromide, forming potassium bromide with the potassium cation, yeah, and you get your, um, you get essentially a new carbon attached to your to your rest group, yeah, here noted in red. And now you can, uh, can uh, reduce your uh, nitrile functionality yeah, to this CH2 group here on the right. Hang on, let me just bring up the laser pointer. Yeah, and effectively what you get is um, homologation. So what, uh, what that means is you get the next homolog in the series, yeah, in, um, in the series of this compound. So that means essentially a slightly longer chain here. We can get amines uh, by the alkylation of an azide ion yeah, and uh, subsequent reduction. Yeah? So the azide ion um, is depicted here yeah, and it's usually denoted as N3- for short. Now uh, the azide ion itself is a good nucleophile. So again you can use it in a in an SN2 reaction, yeah, nucleophilic substitution with an alkyl bromide, for example, or any alkyl halide, and you will get here your alkyl azide. And now you can uh, um, reduce uh, this alkyl azide using lithium aluminium hydride and subsequent uh, workup with water. Yeah? Well, alternatively, you can do that all in one step with hydrogen over palladium catalyst to get your free amine. Yeah? Now, uh, azides, um, or this azide ion is uh, 
very useful. Yeah, so for example, with potassium azide and uh, and water, um, you would get uh, here essentially your azide uh, next to an alcohol. Yeah, when you react that with a with an epoxide, so you open up your epoxide, and subsequent um, subsequent reduction uh, using the same method, lithium aluminium hydride and water, will give you this better amino alcohol. Yeah, so. Here in this uh, in this case, let me just draw that in. Yeah, so your OH uh, alcohol functionality is on the alpha carbon and the amine ends up on the beta carbon. Likewise, uh, we can reduce amides yeah, with strong reductants such as lithium aluminium hydride in ether and in in a subsequent uh, acid workup yeah, to get the free amine or in borane, yeah, borane BH3 in the presence of Lewis acids, yeah, so for example BF3, yeah, that would afford you your free amine as well. Uh, alternatively, we can uh, get our amine by the reduction of aromatic nitro compounds. So here we have uh, a trifluoromethyl benzene, yeah, uh, um, so we have got free uh, um, Fluorine atoms attached to this carbon here. Yeah. So as you know, fluorine, um, one of well, the most electronegative element in the periodic table. So uh, this substituent is highly electron withdrawing. Yeah. So it will be directing into the meta positions. Yeah. And we can react that now with our nitrogen dioxide, like so. And reform the aromatic, uh, the aromatic uh, ring by deprotonation, yeah, and you get your here on the right hand side your one nitro free trifluoromethyl benzene. Yeah, so here the nitro group in one position, the trifluoromethyl group in free position. Yeah, so overall this reaction goes with. Uh, 96% yield, yeah, to give you your nitro trifluoromethyl benzene, and now um, you can react that with tin uh, tin metal in concentrated uh, hydrochloric acid, yeah, to get your uh, amine in 95% yield, yeah, in the presence of HCl, of course, most likely as a um, as a chlorine salt. We could also attempt um, to generate a new amine uh, via the uh, addition of, an, of a nitrogen nucleophile to aldehydes and ketones. Yeah? Um, and this is usually performed with an acid catalyst. Yeah? So uh, our acid, here uh, generic AH, uh, readily dissociates into A- and H+. Yeah? And we can now bring up a pen protonate our aldehyde or ketone yeah turning it into yeah uh, into a better electrophile so now our amine can attack here at this um, sp2 hybridized planar carbon yeah and now we can of course deprotonate the amine for our a minus for example yeah and here we can reprotonate the OH group. And now this is of course, uh, this, uh, this OH is now here present as an H2O plus. So it's a good leaving group. And yeah, so our nitrogen lone pair can essentially intramolecularly kick it out. Yeah, and our A minus can then again deprotonate this uh, yeah now imine yeah and like so you regenerate your acid yeah so this is the catalysis part so this acid can now again dissociate restarting the entire process and you are left with your imine yeah now that's not quite the amine that we are aiming for. So we can reduce that now, yeah, using, for example, 
Yeah, so reduction using, for example, hydrogen over palladium catalyst. Yeah, or we can do that all in a one-pot uh, uh, synthesis. Yeah, using, for example, here sodium cyanoborohydride. Yeah, or alternatively, sodium acetoxyborohydride. Yeah, uh, these are well, you, you, the name gives it away. So borohydrides. Um, are delivering an H minus equivalent. However, they are, um, uh, thanks to their substituents here, the cyanide or the um, uh, this uh, uh, acetoxy group here, yeah, they are much much milder reducing agents. In fact, if you want to be uh, stoichiometric, you can go as far as um, replacing two th two other hydrogens on this boron by your acetoxy group, yeah, so uh, sodium triacetoxy borohydride. So, uh, well, in effect, yeah, your borohydride with a substituent delivers an H minus equivalent to this imine here. Yeah, and now we can readily reprotonate in the presence of an alcohol yeah, to give us our amine. Uh, we can get an alkene here on the right hand side and a tertiary amine uh, via the so-called Hofmann elimination. Yeah, so this is the thermal decomposition of a quaternary ammonium hydroxide. Yeah, so uh, essentially what we're doing here is we're taking our primary amine, yeah, and reacting it here in this example with methyl iodide, but we can use other alkyl halides as well. Um, first to this quaternary iodide salt, yeah, and uh, then we are um, uh, subjecting this to silver one oxide uh, um, in water. Yeah, so silver silver oxide in water reacts basic, so it, uh, you get these hydroxide anions, which then coordinate to your quaternary um, uh, amine cation. Yeah, and now upon thermal decomposition, you essentially deprotonate. Deprotonate here and kick out your tertiary amine, and you get your alkene. And depending what kind of um, uh, uh, alkyl halide you use in the first step, you get different tertiary amines. Now, in terms of regio selectivity, um, the least substituted alkene is a major product. This is just as a side. So here, slightly different um, uh, quaternary ammonium hydroxide. So we, we have now the choice. Yeah, we, we see it quite clearly here. Yeah, we can either deprotonate here, or we can uh, snatch up one of these blue hydrogens here at the bottom. And in fact, yeah, the least substituted alkene here is a major product of this reaction. Now, on the previous slide, you will have surely wondered as to why Hofmann elimination affords the least substituted alkene as the major product. Well, let's delve into that question, shall we? So, um, it's a combination of steric factors and orbital overlap. So, essentially, what we're doing here is an alpha-beta elimination. Yes, and as you might remember from uh, Organic Chemistry 1, uh, this requires an anti-periplanar uh, um, alignment yeah, of uh, the bond you are breaking here between the carbon and hydrogen and um, uh, the, bond, uh, the leaving group. Yeah? So um, let's consider um, this following amine, yeah, this amine, uh, uh, ammonium hydroxide. Again, we've got uh, uh, two choices how to kick out our tertiary amine. Yeah, by deprotonation of either of these um, two blue hydrogens here, yeah, that will afford us the more substituted alkene and the minor product. 
or alternatively we can deprotonate on the other end over here yeah to get the major product now as i mentioned yeah we need uh, anti periplanar alignment of a hydrogen that we are um, snatching up yeah and the uh, tertiary amine leaving group yeah and since there is free rotation around all these bonds here um, uh, we can get into such an alignment. Yeah? So let's consider first the deprotonation of uh, uh, these blue hydrogens here yeah? that afford the minor product. Yeah? So um, uh, this is our uh, uh, projection for this case yeah? to get the blue hydrogens yeah? seen here, anti periplanar to our leaving group. And what you immediately see here, yeah, is that the methyl group and our tertiary uh, tertiary ammonium cation here are in very close proximity in this uh, in this geometry. Yeah, both of them are fairly bulky. Yeah, and particularly in particular the, uh, the tertiary ammonium. Yeah, so uh, we get gauche interactions, yeah, which are unfavorable. Uh, unfavorable. Now let's consider the other case yeah so the deprotonation of a methyl group instead yeah so here in this case yeah we can also get an anti periplanar alignment of a red uh, uh, carbon hydrogen bonds here at the back yeah with our leaving group yeah and here in this case the bulky substituents are very far apart yeah so this is favorable Yeah, now let's consider the orbital overlap. Yeah, and uh, as I mentioned, we get this anti periplanar alignment yeah, of our CH bond to the leaving group. Yes, yeah, so now we can, in fact, break this uh, sigma bond here. Yeah. And we get an uh, we get good orbital overlap here, and we also break the carbon nitrogen bond here, yeah, and kicking out our tertiary amine. So uh, in other words, yeah, we get good orbital overlap, yeah, um, of these sp3 um, uh, orbitals, yeah. And um, uh, we get no unfavorable steric interactions, hence this will be our preferred route. Right, so far we've heard about uh, the reactivity of alcohols and of amines. Um, next time we'll take a brief departure yeah, um, and introduce protecting groups. Yeah? So essentially tools and methods how to protect uh, amines and alcohols um, uh, to enable uh, their selective uh, reactions. See you next time.